What is up, my dudes? I've been getting a lot of questions about transfer hammering and transposing. When do you want to use it? How do you want to use it? So I'm going to break down these systems for you in this video and help you understand how and when you can use these systems to progress through MapleStory. Let's go. So first off, the reason I'm making this guide, including both these systems in this video, is because they are kind of similar. They both exist in some way so you can transfer bonus stats from a lower level item into a higher level item by consuming your source item, which is the item you want to transfer stats from, to the target item, which is the item you want to transfer the stats to. So source and target are all terms that I'll use throughout this video. First, I'll highlight the similarities between systems, then the differences, and I'll finish by showing what the most valuable uses of each of these systems is in different stages in the game to facilitate your progression. I'll be using the same stages that I also use in the progression sheet. I'll link it down below if you guys need a refresher. Please note that the meta around these systems could change with future KMS updates, but when you're armed with the information from this guide, you'll be able to see it coming and adapt. So first off, the similarity. Like I mentioned before, it's about moving bonus stats from a source item to a higher level target item within the same item group. Transfer Hammer does this mostly to remedy costs of the upgrade by taking advantage of Starforce events or to salvage previous investments in a source item that already exists. Since we don't have trade, this is the only way that we can preserve some of that value. And Transposing does this to increase the bonus stats and to produce higher achievable best-in-slot items in the late and endgame. Second similarity is the cost of moving your bonus stats is one star. For Transfer Hammer, make sure to be at a Starforce safe spot where you cannot drop in case of a fail after the transfer. Safe spots are from 0 to 10 stars, at 15, and at 20. For transposing, you always want to do this at 16 stars because of how the system works. This will add the max amount of bonus stats to your item. And there's also an additional cost of 10 deneros per attempt of transposing, and you can do up to 10 attempts per day with a low chance of succeeding by talking to an APC called Pietreno in San Comerci. And the third thing they have in common is that both your soul weapon and weapon soul are transferred. Now let's get into the differences. So for potential, Transfer Hammer saves your potential tier, but only up to a max of Epic tier. If the tier is reduced in this transfer, the potential lines are preserved as much as possible. To make sure what the outcome will look like, check the Transfer Hammer window to see the result, like you see in the video right here. Transposing saves your potential tier regardless of the tier, but it rerolls the stats within, as if a cube was used. Second difference is how flame stats are treated. So for transfer hammer, the flame stats of the source item are lost and a target item keeps their flame stats. Again, you can also check this outcome in the transfer hammer window to make sure that everything is going the way you want it to go. For transposing, the flame stats are transferred from your source item to your target item. Target item flames are completely overwritten. Please note when transposing does not change the inherent flame disadvantage the Sweetwater item has, which is why you aim for a very high flame score on your source item before transposing. Afterwards, you can never reroll the flame ever. If you would do that, you would completely ruin the investment because you would get bad outcomes on your flames. Second note here, the numbers in your stats might be realigned because the sources for the flame tiers have to make sense after transposing on your target item, which is a higher level. This causes sometimes numbers to get jumbled up and even magenta colored minus numbers to appear. Don't worry, this doesn't mean that you're losing any stats, it just means you're not gaining any stats, while the stats still have to make sense for the code of the game. You can use this example to figure out what the original flame stats of the item was. Often people will ask you if you transposed, what was your flame that you transposed at? Now if you were to take the number here from the Sweetwater Monocle, the number would be inflated because some of the numbers have been rearranged. You'll see that the green flame numbers and the blue star force numbers are added together when they're transposing, and in order for the flame score to match within the tier of the target level 160 item, some stats from the blue star force numbers are moved into the green flame numbers so that the bonus stats for the flames keep making sense. Keeping the total the same, you can reconstruct what your previous stats were. Since Sweetwater Monocles get plus all stat exactly the same amounts because they are a common equip, you can see that the intellect plus 75 star force stats are supposed to be the numbers for all the stats. This way you can calculate the difference and see that 10 extra stat for strength removed 9 extra stat from dex removed, and 5 extra stat from luck removed. Moving those stats back visually will give you your pre-transposing stats, meaning that the original flame on the Pepalatus mark before transposing was 64 strength, 36 dex, 0 intellect, 20 luck, and 6% all stat. Using the flame score calculator, this will allow you to tell people who are asking what your flame score was before transposing. 
The third difference is the way that the source and the target items are limited. So I previously mentioned item types, weapon have to be the exact same weapon type. So one-handed sword, one-handed sword, staff, staff, etc. For all the other equip types that can be enhanced, no class restrictions apply. So for example, a mage hat could be transferred into a warrior hat. The other thing is tops and bottoms can both transfer into overalls and overalls can transfer into both tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms, however, cannot transfer into each other directly. Transfer Hammer has extra level limitations. If the target item is level 100 or below, the source item can be up to 20 levels lower. You can see an example over here of a level 80 overall transfer hammering into level 90 pants. If the target item is over level 100, the source item can only be up to 10 levels lower. Also, superior grade items, currently Elite, Helysium, Nova, and Tyrant equips, cannot be source or target items for transfer hammering. For transposing, the source item has to be anywhere from level 140 to level 151 and be untradeable. Your target item has to be a Sweetwater item. If you're unsure, try putting the item into Pietreno's UI first to see if it works. Because Nexon. Pencilier and Utgard items, for example, that physically on the item say that they are untradeable, still count as tradable items somehow and aren't able to be transposed. Even though they don't have flame advantage, so you very rarely want to transpose, but we'll get into that later. And now we're getting to the applications. So when it comes to transfer hammering, just keep all your epic items that you find for possible use later. Save items 20 or 10 levels apart, depending on their level, depending on how far you get. Give them one star, transfer hammer up. Basically, this is a way that you can save epic potential on a level 20 item and eventually get it on your CRA equips at level 150. Keep in mind the item limitations. You could also occult cube them for a prime line of your main stat or better because these lines will always be saved even after your transfer. The other thing you could do is transfer to a higher level item that you can already equip. Don't transfer hammer before you reach the level of the next item so you can preserve some of the star force costs you've already invested. Transposing is not a thing yet in the early game, don't worry. Then we get to the mid game. For transfer hammering, mainly you want to find epic tier, Pencilier, and Utgard. The best way to find these is from elite boss, bonus stages, or runes of riches, so that you can transfer those into the Chaos Rutabis gear once you get it. Ideally, you want to get one weapon, one hat, and two overalls, so that you have all of that prepped to transfer hammer over. At least one star. You also want to start stocking up on Daenerys. You can check exclamation mark commercy in my Twitch chat or check the link down below. And useful level 150 items such as shoulders from Madman Ramaru, enraged succum capes, Dominator Pendant, Reinforced Earrings, Reinforced Belts, these kind of items. You'll also be transferring to higher level items that you can already equip to preserve your Star Force costs just like in the early game. And you'll probably want to Star Force level 140 and 150 source items during Star Force events if you don't have your target items yet. That way you can take advantage of the lower cost of Star Forcing your item without even having the actual item yet. For transposing, make sure you start killing and practicing Chaos Papalatus for a chance of the Papalatus mark. As it is a super rare item, and it is a great upgrade if you could transpose it into a Sweetwater Monocle. We're not going to be transposing here yet, but the preparations that I mentioned with Transfer Hammer are also preparations for transposing in the later stages of the game. And then we get to the late game. Transfer Hammer is mainly just to take advantage of Star Force events and using your previously stockpiled source items so that you can transfer these cheaper stars that you got without having to safeguard onto more rare, more expensive, more difficult to replace target items. First example is upgrading from a Tyrant Cape to an Absolab Cape. If you get the Absolab Cape right away, you just Star Force it up right away. Typically, you use a 30% Star Force event to get it up to 15, and then use a 5, 10, 15, 100% event to get it from 15 to 17 with safeguarding. The other way to do it, if you don't have the cape yet, is hold on to your Tyrant Cape. Star Force one of your enraged Zakum Capes, and since you have a few of these, you don't have to safeguard them. You can risk blowing them up, but it'll come at a very low cost, and then do the same thing. Get to 15 stars during a 30% off Star Force event, Hold on to it until a 5, 10, 15, 100% Star Force event, then get it to 16, transfer it to the Absolab Cape, get it to 16 again for free, and then Star Force it from 16 to 17 during that same event. Second example is upgrading a 17 star item into a 20 star item. Let's take a shoulder here, for example. The best way to do this would be to Star Force any level 150 Renmaru shoulder. Remember, because there's no job restriction in transfer hammering, it could be anyone's shoulder. Make sure to save all the shoulders. Star Force this to 21 stars during a 5, 10, 15, 100% Star Force event. Depending on the amount of backups, you can choose with or without safeguard. But for shoulders, they're pretty rare, so I would advise safeguarding for this equip. For other items like shoe and glove, where you can buy a lot of them from the NPC shop, not safeguarding would be a way better option. When you get it to 21 stars, transfer it into your Absolab shoulder and recube your target item. This option is highly advised if your target item does not yet have three line perfect stat for your class. If it does, making more Absolab backups instead and star forcing right on the Absolab shoulder and star forcing it during the 5, 10, 15, 100% event could be a more favorable option. 
Transposing comes into play in the late game to move flame advantage item flame stats onto Sweetwater items who don't have the flame advantage. Also increase the Sweetwater basic stats by the stats they would gain from 15 to 16 by transposing at 16 and then going down to 15 after the transpose. Most of the reason also why we transpose is because the source items are more rare and the Sweetwater target items can be replenished with virtually unlimited dineros. This access to the backups guarantees a final result of 22 star in endgame which allows them to compete with the pitch black boss set whose equips are way more rare and therefore way less likely to get to a high amount of star force where they can compete with this. Also because of their rarity, their set bonus does not really come into play. At this point, it's mainly used for transposing a Fafnir Katara into a Sweetwater Katara, which becomes endgame because the Sweetwater Katara has 30% boss damage and 10% IED on it, as opposed to higher level Kataras. It's also used for the Dominator Pendant into the Sweetwater Pendant for endgame stat effect min-maxing and lack of access to the Source of Suffering, which is the Varus Hilla Pendant and for transposing the Papalatus Mark that I previously mentioned into the Sweetwater Monocle, also for the lack of access to the Magic Eye Patch, which is the Damien Eye Accessory. And then we get to the end game. This is where you're min-maxing. At this point, people already know what they're aiming for, and the sky is basically the limit. Mainly, you'll be using Transfer Hammer for the same reason, but you'll be using it to min-max and get up to 22 stars. There's two options here. You can go to 22 on your source item into the target item and then try to go for 21 to 22, or you can go for 21 on your source item and then transfer hammering to 20 stars on your target item and then try to go from 20 to 22. Second option is more reliable, but again, depends on how many backups you can get. Most of the items you'll be doing this with is replaceable end game equips, mostly Galax accessories, like the superior ring, the superior pendant, the superior earring, and possibly the superior belt. Transposing has no new applications, basically just the previous ones that you might still be looking forward to, which is most likely the Pepalatus Mark one because the drop rate is so bad, you can reach the end game without even seeing one. So I hope that this cleared everything up. If you have any additional questions, let me know. And if you ever need to find me, I'll be live on Twitch. I hope to see you guys during a live stream. Take care.